It's an honor to be here. Two of the absolute best speakers uh, I've ever seen anywhere uh, have been uh, presented by this organization. So I'm a little bit intimidated. I, I've seen TED level talks uh, sponsored by this group, so uh, I'm very honored to uh, be asked to do this tonight. Uh, I'm also tickled that you guys showed up. I figured uh, when Bill announced that there would be uh, an accounting program that most of you guys would find uh, something <coughs> else to do tonight. Uh, generally, um, uh, accounting and, and Linux uh, don't seem to blend together very well, uh, except in the case of me, I'm very, uh, very passionate about uh, open source. And about two days out of the week, I'm passionate about accounting. <laughs> if you can read this, thank a bookkeeper. Writing was invented in Samaria based on the numerical proto-writing systems invented due bookkeeping. So I don't know if any of you guys know Neil Stevenson. He made a lot of hay out of this in Snow Crash. Uh, basically, when you're looking at with the John Desai at the bookkeepings and bookkeepers and the accountants in your corporation, uh, just remember <laughs> that bookkeepings are probably um, the start of, of symbolic uh, thinking about problems. If we waited for poets and historians to invent writing, I'd probably be singing my invoices to my clients right now. Yeah. <laughs> so thank a bookkeeper uh, if you can read these slides. It was likely that writing was independently invented one other time. Actually, people question how often writing was invented. Um, it seems like it might have been independently in, in, invented in China, once in Mesoamerica, once in Samaria, but but we're pretty sure that it was invented in Samaria, absolutely, um, and that uh, very likely was invented in uh, Mesoamerica, where they invented writing to um, follow their passion, which was calendars. So in Samaria, they're counting grain. You know, they're, the bookkeepers needed to invent writing because they were obsessed with whether they had enough grain and who had more grain. And basically, bookkeepers took large rods plunged it down into the grain, and then they scribed on their tablets of clay how much the measurement was that day and how much the measurement was the next day. And then shortly after that, we had computer science. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the uh, Olmecs, they were worried about the end of days, and they invented writing for, for pretty much the same reason. And once again, we arrived at computer science. You can draw a conclusion to life. Uh, so, to draw that together, financial record keeping is not just about how much, but also when the piles of grain are measured, when the sheep are counted, and the delta between counts. Accounting is about stocks and flows. It's the beginning of systems thinking. One of the very first data modelers was argu arguably a friar named Pacioli. Uh, he invented double entry bookkeeping during the time of the Medicis in the 15th century. This is when there was a big mercantile uh, culture happening in Italy, and you also had the Catholic Church. So the Catholic Church had a lot of money to count, they had a lot of debt from people to count, they had a lot of debt to people to count, and so did all these merchants. And, they, uh, and so uh, the debits and credits scheme that uh, make most of us wince in agony uh, when it's described to us uh, was actually invented by this Pacioli guy, and it was a really pretty astute, uh, out-of-the-box way of thinking about a data problem. And uh, it was such a robust idea that we're still using this data model uh, today, 600 years later. We're learning uh, now through the anthropologist David Graeber that uh, debt and keeping track of it is a data modeling problem that has been mastered in cultures across the planet for at least 5,000 years. It turns out that keeping track of debt was considered easier than coining foolproof currency multiple times throughout civilization. The idea that money is a form of information is probably less uh, revolutionary than we might think. <coughs> so who is Eric Leary? How did he get roped into this talk? <laughs> First off, I've never taken an accounting class in my life. Um, 
I've been bookkeeping for a long time, but uh, I've never even had accounting 101. Tried to take it at UNCG uh, two years ago. They said, no, no, go away. We, we, don't, we don't want your kind here. <laughs> um, it was the long hair. Yeah, yeah, it probably was the long hair. Uh, the first software-based accounting system I used was Sage Accounting on an Apple III, uh, but VisiCalc is what I fell in love with. Um, spreadsheet software has been uh, really what's kept me passionate about, uh, about financial record keeping all along. Um, so I've been doing this for about 18 years uh, uh, to make a living. Before that, I worked in film and video production and theater production, uh, which is why I'm so theatrical. <laughs> and I almost sang to you an, in, uh, an invoice tonight, but I, I constrained myself. Um, I've been a QuickBooks Pro Advisor for the past seven years, but I, I don't bleed into it, okay? QuickBooks is good stuff. Basically, I, you know, uh, I identified that for uh, where I was at at that point in time, I just needed a certification. I'm very certification averse, but that it turned out to be a good thing for me, and I do know a lot about QuickBooks, uh, and uh, QuickBooks um, and the Intuit people really have done a lot of smart thinking about accounting, uh, about the accounting market, and about our culture that uh, the open source community does need to pay attention to. I've been to two week-long Python boot camps. Whoa. So uh, 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 my, the reason why I'm here tonight as an accountant is I really do care a lot about Python. I really do care a lot about uh, open source. Um, and so that's basically uh, how, those are my um, credentials for presenting on this topic tonight. Having seen the open source model produce software like Apache Web Server and PostgreSQL, easily equal or superior to anything from the commercial world, I've been on a quest to adopt an open source solution for accounting that is equally compelling. And then the point, the bullet point that was under here until about four nights ago is I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Open source accounting, I've been really hoping that I could find something that I could champion uh, to my clients from the open source world, uh, and there really has not been anything that I felt like was strong enough. Uh, the past week or so, I think we might, we're, we're on the dawn of a, a time where we really can take uh, as uh, development people and as uh, software entrepreneurs, we, we're almost at a place where we can really convince um, our accounting people and our investors that there's some, some uh, platforms out there that they can, they can put their money behind, that they can feel confident in, in terms of um, measuring the company, because basically all accounting is, I look at it as a form of science. We're, it's just a way of measuring performance of, of a group of people that are involved together on a mission. It's not the only important way of measuring performance, but I find, um, I actually, over, I used to hate reconciling bank accounts. I love watching, I love reconciling uh, bank accounts now because Every, every line on that, that bank account, I mean, on that statement, reminds me of a story. It reminds me of an important story in my company. And uh, so I, when I'm looking at the financial record and when a smart entrepreneur is uh, looking at the financial record produced by his company, he's, he's gonna be looking not only at numbers and metrics and delta, those numbers will ultimately start telling you a story. You'll remember the fight, the argument that you had in a meeting room five days before that server got bought or didn't get bought. Uh, and so the accounting record uh, under a smart manager really can be the touchstone to the true stories uh, in a company. Assumptions I have about the uh, audience tonight, that you're committed to open source, that you're ambivalent about the solved problem of financial accounting, which is boring, if not plain distasteful, which is pretty true about me a lot of days. You probably fit one of the four following profiles in terms of how I might be able to benefit you tonight. One, you're probably, you're just an employee. You're not a business owner, you're not a freelance contractor, and you're not a dev shop looking for a new way to make uh, $6 million. How many people in here would say, would say that you're Basically, an employee, 
who does not fit any of the other categories. You just work uh, for a, a wage, okay? So you're kind of going, oh man, I, you know, I don't really need to know about accounting. <coughs> now, of all of you guys, uh, how many of you are keeping financial records uh, and are ready when you fill out TurboTax at the end of the year? And how many of you are going, crap, next year, I've got to start keeping financial records so I can be ready when uh, it's time to do TurboTax. Yeah. All right. Um, that's a, that is a, a good reason to uh, think about financial record keeping if you're, just, if you're just a person. But I'll tell you, for myself, I know a lot of smart people. If you're uh, sometimes keeping financial records just for yourself as a person is a waste of time. Reconciling your bank account is just a waste of time, uh, and I don't do it for me personally. However, for the companies that are my clients, I reconcile their stuff to the penny every month, month after month, year after year. Um, how many of you folks are freelance contractors who uh, are trying to run your own business? You're invoicing, okay. I did that for a long time, and when I was a freelance contractor, I this keeping a financial record was absolutely crucial to me. And I was doing that with the same tools that I used for my clients so that I could develop expertise. I was using QuickBooks uh, and QuickBooks Online. How many, uh, uh, how many people are, are here that are uh, CEOs or CFOs or CTOs in small dev shops uh, here in the triangle? Oh, great. We'll cut about 20 slides out then. <laughs> um, when you freelance contractors uh, start, your, start your first startup uh, where you try to hook arms with three other guys or two guys and two other women and, and make something happen, uh, some of the things I'm going to try to teach you tonight will be really important. Uh, finally, the fourth group would be developers who are looking for something to do, uh, looking for a place to make a difference. Because although we're starting to finally have some choices, uh, the open source world has not really been uh, amazing for the for accounting. Not the way it has been for big data or for CMSs or web-based applications. If you're a corporation with more than 25 employees or 10 million in sales, you probably have a more qualified people than me directing your quest for accounting systems. They're probably a lot more risk averse than I am too. Uh, this is basically just repeating what I have just said. Uh, the accounting choices from the open source world available to employees, players, and small companies are still not awe-inspiring like many other open source tools you know and love. Uh, and I would love to see the, uh, the equivalent of Django or Apache uh, web server uh, or Python. Uh, I would love to see something that, uh, as great as those in the accounting world. Developers who want to disrupt one of the oldest institutions of civilization, uh, accounting could stand to be rocked right now. Okay, the next little section uh, is, is not specific to Linux. The next section, uh, when I'm talking to people about doing a software deployment, when I, clients are saying, I want to get off of Sage and I want to move to QuickBooks, I'm on QuickBooks and I want to move to Sage, Basically, uh, the next uh, 10 or 15 slides are just your information that anybody needs to know who uh, is getting ready to do a software deployment. Uh, there are four sets of stakeholders, uh, and uh, we're going to do sort of a top 10 starting from the least important. Taxation and compliance institutions, and uh, by, by point of reference, your tax accountant. They're not actually the most important stakeholders in your choice of deployment and how you go after your accounting process. But really, the tax guy is what, it, you could be like me and, and not keep personal tax records, but the one thing that drives everybody to keep tax and financial records, whether they want to or not, is paying taxes. So although I don't think it's the most important reason to do it, it is the most painful driver of doing accounting, <coughs> is uh, fulfilling your obligations uh, 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 to uh, society um, for funding it. And not only to uh, fund for taxes, um, the financial record drives a lot of compliance stuff. Like I have to do stuff for workman's comp for my company right now. And 
because I really took the time to tune up my accounting software and because I invest the time putting good data into my accounting software going in, I can punch a button when it's time to do my workman comps, uh, workman's comp reports, and I have it there pretty easy please. Not like a lot of people who are too lazy to really tune out their software, really put the data in, who sit there with 10 keys in a mad anxiety rush every month because they've got to do their workman's comp report. If you invest the time in good accounting software, it should be the same way we like it in the software development world, the lazy way. You front load your effort, punch a button, you're compliant. That's what we want accounting software to do. Uh, the second set of stakeholders that are really important for the accounting record are your lending and borrowing partners, notably bankers and investors. Uh, if you, the biggest a very important reason to keep uh, good accounting records is to have the reports that they can generate so that you can go to your banker and say, we kick ass at my company, we need, we need 60,000 to make the next payroll or I'm gonna lose my devs. You wanna have, if you've got a good performance and you can show that uh, with your accounting record, you get the loan. If you can't, even if you have great performance, but if they aren't seeing a convincing story in the accounting reports, then you're not gonna get the loan, you're gonna lose your debts. It's also important for investors. I mean, investors are not only looking at the record of performance, they actually look at the quality of the accounting record itself, you know, as sort of an, uh, an, uh, an indication of your competency as a company. So that's, uh, these are important stakeholders uh, in investing in your accounting record, uh, even though there's a lot of pain, that's the payback. The other interesting thing about these first two sets of stakeholders is uh, they work in opposition to each other to keep the accounting record accurate. Because for the tax guy, you want to prove that you're not making any money. Because you don't want to pay any taxes. <laughs> for your bankers and investors, you want to prove that you're making a lot of money so that you can get uh, assistance. So those two contravailing forces uh, they tend to drive uh, good financial record keeping. If you keep both of those sets of stakeholders in mind and in balance, well, intrinsically, you're probably going to have accurate records because uh, that's the only way to serve both of them pretty well. If you obsess over one set of stakeholders over the other, you, you know, that's when you start seeing books kind of not being really accurate. The next set of stakeholders is pretty much employees, vendors, and customers, your partners in the mission. Um, everyone who relies on the company, uh, they benefit. If you work for a company that has good financial records, you, uh, you probably have a better, better HR experience with that company. Ever work for a company that lost, forgot to pay your paycheck? Bad <laughs> record keeping is very likely the reason why that happened. Ever been a contractor and find out that your invoice got lost by the major university you've been working for for the past six weeks? That's because they're so big that you know you just got lost in the noise. That's not great financial record keeping. Uh, in my world, in the film and video production world that I lived in before, we would invoice you know IBM and Burroughs Welcome and Glaxo back in the days, and yeah, it was like you know maybe you'll get paid 60 or 90 days. Okay? Uh, you know a great company uh, when they pay you on time, when they're on time, and when you're, uh, and you're definitely have experience when you're a customer and a, and a company charges you for something that you didn't buy, that's bad financial record keeping, right? So uh, as a business person, uh, there's a lot of pain in accurate financial record keeping and doing the data gathering that has to be done, but uh, it's what keeps the community together. Uh, and it's in, in <coughs> accounting software needs to provide features like accounts receivable management, invoicing accounts payable. There's, I'm gonna be presenting a set of core requirements that all companies have to have, but then the business model of your company will drive uh, some of the features that you need in an accounting software. The final most important set of stakeholders in uh, accounting software are owners and managers. This seems really obvious, but as a, as a uh, contract bookkeeper, you'd be surprised how many uh, guys I've, I've worked for 
who never looked at their financials. I mean, they just wanted they just wanted to get the tax person off their back. They did not use the income statement and the balance sheet and the cash flow statement to help them make uh, decisions about their company, and uh, that's crazy. Although the tax man, I'm going to read this slide. Although the tax man compels the implementation of an accurate financial record, the most important stakeholders in the record are the owners and managers. Their need to create a financial dashboard of timely and in-depth reports that allow them to make key management decisions correctly is the most important driver of accounting software design. In a world being transformed by big data, one of the most important data sets that is often not sufficiently exploited is still the accounting record. This is because there is cost and time and resources that is painful to bear in a, for a single freelancer or a small company. Many of my key requirements in evaluating open source software revolve around giving owners and managers competitive advantage by allowing lean process. Yeah, now even accountants have uh, co-opted the lean and agile, uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, but there, uh, I am very actively involved in companies that their procedures, you know, one of the reasons why I used to hate accountants and, and business people and think they're all evils. I thought, oh man, all these processes and procedures, they're ridiculous, half of them are a waste of time. And uh, in my world, I spend a lot of time trying to get it down to the bone, get rid of uh, the excess process. Uh, we want to make accounting be lean and agile the same way we want uh, software development to be lean and agile. And we wanted to, um, and I'm learning a lot of lessons from my amateur involvement with Python in the development world that I take home uh, to my accounting uh, consultancy. Developers, you guys are, uh, you know, uh, we can, everybody can learn from developers in my opinion. There was one other really important point I had to make there, but I've completely forgot. So it wasn't, uh, it was, that means it was really important. Okay, uh, requirements and desirable features of accounting software in the 21st century. We're devs, we don't care about culture, we care about requirements. Um, we're gonna blow through some of the key requirements uh, that you need to look at. Core execution of the double entry ledger model, very deftly hidden. The double entry model, the debits and credits thing that uh, Pacioli came up with, uh, in terms of being the data model, that's great in terms of making people deal with debits and credits and T-bars, uh, uh Make it look like a checkbook, make the interface look like something that a person understands. Uh, I've ultimately, after many years, I've kind of, I've grown cozy with this debits and credits stuff, but I still half the time can't tell you whether I'm supposed to be debiting or crediting an account. I really depend on good interface design hiding that data model from me and representing <coughs> Uh, the data entry and the reporting in a way that's human and obvious to me. Uh, beyond that, though, I do like to see other ways of tagging and classing transactions beyond the chart of accounts. Um, uh, QuickBooks has a great feature called classes. So I don't have to just deal with whether something is an, an expense or uh, 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 an income or what, uh, one of these classical account things. I can say, uh, all of these transactions here are related to the, uh, the rollout of, of uh, Thumper 3.0. That way I can class a bunch of transactions that span the whole chart of accounts and associate it with one particular uh, business mission. So being able to do some tagging and classing beyond the uh, traditional accounting uh, model is very good. GAP compliance and implementation of essential accounting controls. GAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting uh, Procedures. It's a big book, this thick, and then a bunch of other books. I really don't know that much about it, except for um, whatever I need to know to be compliant within my company. But if you're, a, if you're an open source company developing open source software, part of the responsibility of the software is to make sure that uh, it enforces GAP compliance with these processes. These processes are basically go around, go are uh, driven by what we call accounting controls. An accounting control is a way, uh, a typical accounting control that, uh, that's understandable by anybody is you got a petty cash box, 
and you want to you want to insist that when everybody whenever you give petty cash to an employee to go buy some cokes and pizza uh, for the office, they come back uh, with the change and a receipt, and that the two together match the amount of money that was sent out. That's an accounting control. And an accounting control uh, go beyond that simple concept to very complex uh, implementations uh, uh, that you need to do in order to control complex problems that you can have in, in keeping track of money. Why are you doing this? Money makes people mad. If somebody feels like they're getting ripped off or stolen, like if you're one of the three partners in a software company, you feel like one of the partners is blowing all the money on junkets to Italy uh, where he doesn't actually attend the uh, conferences he's supposed to be attending, you get kind of hot about that. So the accounting record is a way that you keep score and you make sure that all the partners, that's, it's a way of measuring justice. So an accounting controls uh, very much are part of that. And the other thing that I think is very important to say about accounting controls, uh, we as minions in corporations we have to do these purchase requisitions. We have to fill out these multi-part forms. We go through these ridiculous procedures that feel like they are uh, odious and unnecessary. But there is sort of a, uh, it's just like accounting software. A lot of these uh, procedures and processes that you deal with are for handling exceptions. 90% of the time, if everything is going right, why would you ever need to do this? Accountants, being the proto-developers that they have been since the Sumerians, they're always writing code and process for exceptions. They're, it's all about exception handling. That's what accounting controls really are about. So the next time uh, you're working at the university and you gotta fill out a ridiculous uh, requisition form in three parts, and then have to do two other processes after that just to get a new laptop, exception handling, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Um, import and export transactions via OFX and similar file transfer standards. Um, basically, this means that you can go to your bank, you can download your uh, statement, and you don't have to do any data entry. Uh, accounting is all about uh, only capture data once, never, and uh, the mantra that developers uh, have been honoring uh, forever. Um, so if you're gonna do accounting software, if you're not implementing uh, a way to, um, to import via OFX, then that, that really should be a core requirement if you start writing um, accounting software in the open source world. Uh, and it's gonna become more important because I live in a world where we're writing less and less checks. It's actually a, a huge amount of the process that I, that I deal with is about paper. And I'm in a world now where already in three different companies, 25% of the transactions I deal, there's no paper. Yeah, somebody shoots money into my account and I shoot money out of my account electronically and we're having to develop a whole lot of new process to handle that and that's all gonna be done with what um, the open source world knows how to do best, which is uh, links JSON, JSON, XML. We need to come up with interchange formats that support the new digital uh, financial world that we're going to be living in. Uh, and, and involved in that, and this comes up with, uh, um, it'll come up with GNU Cash. Uh, QuickBooks got, is very good at this. QuickBooks, uh, when it imports uh, OFX files, if you've got, uh, if you import your credit card file and you say, I paid $500 down on my credit card this month from my bank account, and you import that file, and you go to your bank and you import your bank file, and you say, I paid my credit card uh, down by $500 from my bank account, you shouldn't have two transactions in the accounting record. The software needs to be smart enough to go, that's the same transaction, that's two sides of the same transaction. And that's obvious and duh, except for I've also been helping a lot of people out uh, who have adopted all of these uh, checkbook writing softwares that are available in the App Store from Apple, you would be stunned how much pay software is out there that cannot do that, that can't do that reconciliation. So, uh, and for a while I wasn't entirely convinced that GNU Cash was doing it correctly, but I, I think it's, 
it's doing it now. Check printing is still an important feature to have. It was the feature to have in QuickBooks when I started doing bookkeeping. Oh, I just want to be able to print my checks from a printer. You know, that's that's uh, golden. That's still a very good thing to be able to do. Most of the open source implementations of uh, the check writing are awful. That's still where QuickBooks and the commercial uh, world have really nailed it. But guess what? In five years, I don't think it's going to matter anymore. I don't think we'll be writing checks anymore. This is a chance for open source to get ahead. Um, and it might not be five years, it might be three. I think very soon now, everything is going to be digital. And, and uh, if you decide that you want to take a crack at writing open source uh, accounting software, really get on top of um, uh, RESTful API and, and, and data formats that allow it to all just be magic. Bank account reconciliation feature. You do reconcile your bank account, don't you? No. Okay, I don't, I don't reconcile mine either. But I did for years. But if you're a company, uh, rec reconciliation is absolutely core. And I've been surprised in evaluating uh, open source accounting software over the past 10 years where that was always to be done. To be done. It wasn't there. It's only now starting to show up in uh, the key packages that I've been tra uh, tracking. A strong custom report engine along with easy generation of the standard financial reports. And this, is, this is SQL and when we start moving to Mongo and Couch and all of that, uh, it's, it's, there's, there's two things that accounting software does and actually uh, I think accounting really is what has driven the software world uh, in, in this. There are standard reports that you got to produce that are the standard reports that allow uh, everybody to compare apples to oranges but the same way and that's the balance statement, the income statement, the cash flow statement. But there are also a lot of things that you need to be able to just, you need to be able to write a custom query to find that thing you got to figure out. Which of our developers uh, produce the most lines of code per dollar? <laughs> you know, uh, those evil metrics that managers delight in and all the rest of us hate, but they're, they're often, um, nuanced reporting is a, a vital strength in a good accounting software. Good accounting software should be multi-user. There's no excuse for not being multi-user anymore. And if they're multi-user, uh, secure authentication and granular access control for multiple users. This is another area where open source can prevail. Right now, I'm stuck. I'm using uh, QuickBooks uh, Online, um, and it does not have the granular level of access. I don't get to choose, you know, with a, a matrix exactly what people can access and I'd like to be able to do that. You want your sales guys to not be able to look at the payroll. They don't need to see what, they don't need to be able to look at the, the whole thing. And the more granular you can make your access uh, model for an accounting software, the better. It's just like anything else uh, in the in web applications. Then, ultimately, depending on your business model, we need to have invoicing, sales order, bill entry, and purchase orders. Full AP and AR capability. Now, if you're, a per if you're using a new cash and you're just an employee who just wants to keep track of your checkbook and, and try to fill out your tax a little faster, or if you're a freelance con but even if you're a freelance contractor, a <laughs> lot of the open source software stunk because you really could not produce an invoice from it. And, you know, if you're a contractor, you want to be able to produce an invoice. Now, uh, not everybody needs an item list or inventory, but I, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're in a software dev shop, you really don't have inventory, but you do have 15 or 30 items of services that you want to provide to your customers. So an item list uh, implementation is uh, really important. And then a time and services implementation. Finally, requirement, documentation. And I gotta tell you, uh, of the five softwares that I'm gonna present to you uh, momentarily, still the biggest problem in open source accounting is not the software, it's the documentation. And 
I think it's, it's telling that I, a neophyte, amateur Python guy, could bring up a Django web application server because the documentation in that community is so strong. I still cannot bring up a Triton accounting system software. So uh, documentation has to happen at three levels. Documentation in the software, then the other big thing that Django and Apache and uh, Cherry Pie and uh, all the, the frameworks that I'm familiar with, there's a huge user base of documentation. People do tutorials, and those softwares are discoverable. And that's the other thing that the commercial software guys, they spend a lot of money on this because they know this is where they make bank, and this is where it's very hard. This is the unfair advantage that they have over open source. Doing, you know, having all of those little help boxes that just come up, the mouse over uh, boxes that sort of say, this is what you need to be trying to do here. GNU Cache is still terrible at that. I, I still basically, when I'm using GNU Cache this week, uh, it's still, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm wandering in the wilderness. And it's more like playing a dungeon game than uh, using <laughs> contemporary bookkeeping software. Because I keep finding out that thing that I thought wasn't in GNU Cache is there. I just didn't know how to find it. So uh, making uh, the, the biggest challenge for open so source software, I think, to make it have traction um, in the next decade documentation, user community, and do the burn to get that discoverability built into your user interface. New features that are going to become uh, requirements. Web-based. It's like everything else. I mean, uh, if you're not writing a, a web-based um, accounting software, you're going to be left behind. Uh, RESTful API for integrations and custom modules. Back in the old days of SAP and Oracle and all the big monolithic uh, software companies that we know about, they were also, they had a modular approach because when you get into the big enterprise, if you're a big corporation, you got your 15 modules of the way you need to do stuff and you don't need to be burdened with the eight ways that you don't do stuff. If you're a software company, you don't need the manufacturing stuff that Ford and Toyota have. You have particular problems you gotta solve and they went to a modular approach. But it was all within the tent, right? If we once we move to web-based, uh, and what uh, QuickBooks has already picked up on is, in their online version, rather than trying to write all of their software themselves, they have RESTful APIs for their commercial software, so that uh, custom customizations that are needed for particular business models can be done by other devs, right? That means there's room for you guys to get into writing software for commercial applications still with it, that are based on uh, open technologies because we're depending on these RESTful APIs. I know I'm preaching to the converted here, uh, uh, and, but I'm also preaching to the converted. This is a place where open source guys and women have strength, and we need to leverage that strength to get into this market. Fund accounting, more and more of the world is a uh, nonprofit. Uh, and uh, or is government based and so accounting software that deals with the particularities of fund accounting uh, is becoming more and more crucial it's also an area where there's opportunity project management integration uh, if you want to write uh, what software companies are basically still shoehorning accounting software that was written for manufacturing or for other people I, I think there's a big opportunity to do accounting software that has project management and agile development baked into the accounting software. Because what I see in the project management world uh, that I don't like is we put budgets on our project management, but we never actualize to budget. There, with that, that feedback that you're supposed to have where you say, this is what we said we were going to spend for each child in our hierarchical project management plan. Never really, in most, in most cases that I've seen, there's no actual number at the end of the day. When I was in filmmaking, we always actualized the budget. The, the project management paradigm that I learned was filmmaking, and 
if, as far as I'm concerned, if, I don't care if the credits were rolling at the end of the film. If we had not actualized the budget uh, to our, our project budget at the end of the film, we hadn't made a movie as far as I was concerned. Amenable to lean, agile accounting practice. Yeah, everybody wants to be lean and agile now, uh, but it really is a movement uh, in accounting. Um, but these are also, as we all know, they're turning into buzzwords. Finally, uh, it's time to open the envelopes. <laughs> Some financial record keeping candidates connected to the open source development for consideration. I made a, <coughs> I went to Wikipedia. Let's see if I can make everybody dizzy here. Uh, you know, Wikipedia, uh, it's our, our friend. There is a great chart on Wikipedia. And it's the comparison of accounting software, but tellingly, uh, let's see if I can make this fit in the screen. Uh, tellingly, Although there's commercial software in here, that's the second table. So on Wikipedia, bless uh, this uh, contributor's heart, you start with all the, uh, all the open source accounting software uh, and give us a nice matrix of, um, of requirements and qualifications. Um, and this is a very worthy thing to study if you want to get in the game. And I've certainly spent a lot of time here. And then they get into the proprietary software, all the big dogs that we know and talk about and the stuff that I, I'm still mostly compelled to use because I haven't been satisfied. And then there's yet another table, further details. Now, this table is not totally up to the, the moment. Uh, one of the key things that I also see when I've been evaluating accounting software over the past 12 years, uh, it's like a lot of things. It doesn't stay vital. A lot of these code bases become more bun. They're no longer tended because there's no traction. It's hard to do. Um, so I'm, uh, one of my criteria when I was judging software to present to you folks tonight, well first, is it still being actively developed? Is, are, there still, um, uh, are there still releases coming out? So I, we won't dwell on this table. I try to synopsize this information uh, in my own table here. And what I've come up with is uh, I've been hating GNU Cache for 10 years. Didn't like it every time I tried to use it. Uh, uh, I couldn't find, I couldn't, I, I knew stuff was there, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it. The interface actually worked weird to me in strange ways. Like I'd be trying to enter a check and I, for some reason I couldn't split, I couldn't do a split. You know, I was like, this, I'm just working too hard. And then it would hang, I mean, it hung a lot. And the, even this summer, when uh, when Bill when I got roped into doing this, I said, "Okay, I got I got to go and do it again." And this summer, I still uh, I think uh, uh, no, don't point there. Uh, I was, anyway, I did not like it this summer. I reevaluated this software uh, in the past month because uh, um, it really is the legacy <coughs> tent pole software that's included in all the uh, distributions. And uh, the interesting thing about this, these guys are still, they're still patching it every week. I mean, if you go and look at it, there's, they're patching it every week. They're still working on it. It's very actively worked on. And I actually discovered that if you just hang in there, uh, either have lots of liquor or lots of chocolate and are forced to <laughs> deal with it because you got to present on it. Uh, <laughs> there is actually a lot of goodness in that software. <laughs> it's all there, the stuff you need. If you're, a, if you're, a, if you're uh, a, uh, a person who just needs to keep track of uh, information for your personal checkbook and so you can be a little more ready for tax time, or if you're, a, more importantly to me, if you're a freelance contractor and you've got to keep track of your business, you want to be able to convince uh, three other guys that you really do have game when it comes to the financial side of your development shop. You really can invoice and do everything you need to do as a freelance contractor out of this software. Um, your stumbling uh, blocks are going to be um, it's not super discoverable. And so you're going to have to call me up and uh, hire me out for my exorbitant rate to be a <laughs> consultant. 
and help you get through it, or take that same money and buy a lot of chocolate or liquor. Um, <laughs> you can get there with the new cash now, but I have not been able to say that until this year, in my opinion. Uh, my second choice, and these are the two softwares that we're going to focus on tonight, is Odoo. Uh, and I'll talk more about that uh, in a moment, but it is the software that uh, uh, really has come on strong, has been like the horse that's limping and basically should have been shot and uh, <laughs> pulled off the racetrack as of a year ago. And uh, the guy who's been the real flogger of that uh, framework <laughs> flogged it uh, again and has actually merged to be comparable to QuickBooks Online or Xero, which are the two online-based accounting products that uh, I feel uh, I really can represent to a client uh, of any size um, or, or a level of prestige. I think uh, this product uh, is actually almost ready, it's ready to go. Um, SQL Ledger has been around for a long time. It's a very reputable, solid piece of software. Uh, it is written in Perl, and because I um, because I am more of a Python guy, I just I've never I felt like when I read this guy's blog, this guy who who is the main uh, proponent of SQL Ledger, philosophically he and I are totally of a mind. Uh, uh, philosophically, I totally agree with this guy. I just had to make the decision. I'm a Python guy. I'm not a Perl guy. I'm going to try to focus on software that is based on uh, technologies that I understand a little better. If you're a Perl person, this is a mature uh, base, and, uh, uh, and I would definitely encourage you to get involved with SQL Ledger. Uh, it has been forked. There is also something called Ledger SMB, um, and uh, that is worthy as well, uh, but I can't really get into the particulars of that because I'm not prey to the pearl battles that are late in those types of forms. Uh, so there, but there are two very good pearl-based uh, possibilities out there. Triton has been my heartthrob for the past 10 years. But I can, uh, the first time I got it uh, stood up, got the server and the client stood up, and you know, spent several weekends figuring out how to do it, there was no meat there. There was just too much functionality that wasn't there. Uh, I think. The Triton is a fork from uh, this. Odoo is what was called Open Office, and before that it was called Tiny Earth. They're both Python based uh, on PostgreSQL, which are the two technologies that I'm really the most, uh, I feel the most comfortable with. I love PostgreSQL, uh, I think it's a great database, and I like, I like Python. Uh, and this was a fork of that. I think what happened with this guy is uh, the open office people, uh, they got involved with a model where they were really trying to figure out how to commercialize what they were doing. They were trying to figure out how to fund that model. And they relaxed their coding standards. And the guy who's doing Triton and the people who are involved with Triton are really trying to stick to test-driven development and a little bit of a less Wild West uh, atmosphere in terms of all the ways that They've opened it up for the API for other people to add modules. The problem is, is that uh, uh, you know it's underfunded and it just it needs developers. Right now, I just need some people to stand this software up a few more times. And I think if if we could pull Django people off of Django the, and put them onto this, we would we could. This is the stack that I think could be um, could be the best of breed. Finally, um, there's something called Apache Open for Business. Uh, uh, and if you're a Java-based person, this got a huge amount of push. The biggest thing that validates it is it's part of Apache. Okay? I, I've got a lot of don't knows because I just ran out of research capacity. And the other thing that I was starting to see when I, when I tried, was trying to stand up the server and the client for this, I was, I was hitting roadblocks too fast. Uh, and, uh, and when I was going to look for the documentation, for the tutorials, empty pages. 
So I think there's probably a very mature, strong technology here. There's clearly Apache support for this stack. Uh, but you got to be committed. There's, it's going to take more committed people to, to push this over. And I think what I see here is I see 2010, lots of heat, and now it's tapering off. But I also saw 2010, lots of heat on this, and it was tapering off, and I gave up on it, and boom, it's now, it's now back in the race. How am I doing for time? Oh, I've got eight minutes left, and I have, uh, I have 11 minutes left, and I have 40 minutes of slides. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the five softwares I'm willing to invest time in are GNU Cache, Odoo, SQL Ledger, and or its fork, Ledger SMB, Triton, and Apache Open for Business. Uh, if somebody, you know, I'm, if I could find three other people that wanted to work on any of those five, uh, I'd work on it with them. The two winners tonight uh, are going to be uh, uh, GNU Cash for personal finance and independent contractors. And I actually, I don't know how to pronounce this, Odoo. Udo, I have no idea how to pronounce it. It's, it's some branding, blah, blah. It was uh, open office until this summer. So now let's, let's go and look at the venerable uh, GNU cache. It's good for individuals and freelance contractors, but it's not multi-user, so I can't recommend it uh, for use in the enterprise. Um, uh, the idea that you got 15 people in a company and then there's this there's this white-haired, bearded guy in the back with a visor who does all the bookkeeping by himself. Those days are gone. We like to distribute the accounting load uh, across the enterprise. Uh, and so I, I really discourage bottlenecking all of your accounting in one software. But if you're an individual contractor, it's good. It imports OFX correctly, mostly, and a lot better at least than a lot of the pay apps that I looked at on the App Store uh, this summer. Somewhat an idiosyncratic interface. It doesn't always help to see how strong it really is. It used to be more buggy. It's pretty tight now, although last night it crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, I, I have a screenshot of the new cache. Um, this is the, the home page. Um, I'm going to go through these screen captures real quick, and then we'll just try to go to GNU Cache Live for a moment on the instance that I have on my uh, laptop. Um, oops. OK, this is a uh, register I, I was testing. Does it really import OFX correctly? So uh, there you are. You're looking at uh, my one of, I have, I have this one account that I felt comfortable showing you guys. It was uh, my freelance account on First Citizens. So this is showing the income and the transfers. So you don't really see any wicked stuff there. You basically see that I invoice people and I put the money immediately into my own account so that I can go spend it. <laughs> uh, but what I did want to, you know, this is what, uh, this got the classic uh, check register uh, interface. Uh, it, interf it imported those uh, transactions from my bank correctly. Uh, this actually represents imports of, across three different uh, accounts, so I saw that it was mostly doing the, that matching correctly. That's, that's huge. Uh, and uh, we talked about my requirement for uh, being able to present reports. Well, that took me forever. This is one reason why I've hated it. But uh, if you, I finally am able to get a, a balance sheet out of this software that I'll take to the bank to get a loan. So it's there. Uh, if you can't find it, uh, email me and I'll help you get it. Uh, there's also some ability to do some, uh, to do some templating to make it better. I kept trying to import my logo. It gave me a way to import this PNG in there, but I have not yet actually seen my logo on any of my reports. So it's still, <laughs> still not there yet. It says it's important. It's, my logo is part of my reporting uh, template, but it's not there. I don't know if it's because it doesn't like the software, does, the code doesn't like this PNG because of its parameters, or if it just doesn't work yet. Um, but overall, that you know, 
that is usable and it can also be pasted into, if you really needed to do something that was presentation quality, you could paste it into LibreOffice. Um, <coughs> and then, show me the money. I can produce, uh, uh, I can now finally produce an invoice that is kind of wretched compared to what I can produce uh, in QuickBooks and present to a client. But uh, it's, this is actually plenty good, and if you're just going to embed it in an email, it's great. So you can, if you're a freelance developer or sysadmin, you can produce an invoice in this software that uh, people take you mostly seriously and pay you. That's a big deal for me. And I couldn't always get that from this software in the past. Okay, I went to the documentation because I was trying to figure out how to use it. Uh, it has built in a feature where if you, you give it credentials of your bank, it'll just swap spit with the bank automatically. You don't have to import the file. So I went to the documentation to find out more about how to do that. This is what I got. <laughs> this section is under construction. Any input will be welcome. This screen is the thing that is killing open source accounting. I see this screen in every software I look at. I still am seeing it over and over again, and it's 12 years later after I started my odyssey. So I actually think uh, if, if guys like me would use this in, you know, basically it's my fault. It's my fault, people, because people like me who use it need to contribute the documentation to this. And really, coders can't do this. You, the accountants have to do this, right? They're the, um, although we usually need somebody who's coding to, to work in partnership with to sort of make, make that happen. Okay, so that's sort of my fast run on uh, GNU Cache. Uh, I, def I have set up uh, an instance on my laptop, and in the interest of time, I won't actually show you how to do some of these things, but if you're interested at, uh, after the talk, uh, we, can, we can go in there. And uh, One thing that does bother me, though, that I just have to share with you, when you set up, uh, set up GNU Cache, it asks you for your information about your company. So I'm getting this report, and it's got Datacraft, 8508 Nicolette Court, where's my city, state, and zip? Uh, uh, if anybody, uh, uh, can I have one of the Apex prizes donated to anybody who can help me figure out how I can now go back into uh, here and update my address? I cannot find it anywhere. Once you've set up the software, if you can update your particulars about your company in the software, Tell me, because I can't find it. <laughs> okay, now, uh, Odoo, formerly Open ERP, formerly Tiny ERP. This the, and Tiny ERP was the beginning of everything. Tiny ERP is what got me excited about. Hey, I code Python, and this cool open source accounting software is written in Python. I'm really smart. Uh, but then it sort of it's it's had a very um, uh, a rough. Uh, 10 years since. It's multi-user, web-based, good for the small business, and I, from what I'm seeing in the past two weeks reevaluating it, um, it is definitely comparable to QuickBooks Online or Xero. Xero is the new commercial guy uh, software out there that's online that's from New Zealand and Australia, and it's the new hotness in the commercial accounting software world. And I, the more I'm looking at this, it could actually give those softwares a run of the money. <laughs> This is the first iteration of this project I think is commerce ready. Thank you, early adopters. Okay, here's a picture of, uh, when you go to Odoo, uh, you, cre you uh, create an account. It is module based. So it really is a totally modular plug and play thing. You have your core accounting and finance module. You get to add these things uh, by the modules you need. So that's a core module that probably everyone needs. Um, and then purchase management and sales management, those are core things that I've been saying that you need. Uh, I don't think instant messaging is a requirement, but a lot of software guys might think it's a requirement. There really is a very robust community that has grown up around this. This software is primarily, it's European. You know, Europeans have been uh, developing this project. It's very centered in Belgium and 
Holland and Germany. And uh, um, there's, the community is huge out there. So I, I logged in. And yes, uh, and all the other iterations of Open Office and uh, every, all the other accounting software, it's like, I just, I just want to get started. Let me, this is the first time I've been able to go, and within five minutes of creating my account, I was able to create a company. Um, uh, I was able to create a user. Oh, no, I was able to create some play money. I gave myself $25,000 to start. This is my key tip for uh, evaluating accounting software. Don't start with your own data set. Uh, bring, that, bring, bring the software up. Give yourself $25,000, $100,000, $250,000, $1,000,000, and play. Make yourself a sandbox. I always start with new software is doing that. So I've created, it allowed me very quickly to find where the journal entries were and give myself some play money. That's, that was, uh, um, um, what do you guys call that in the gaming world when you get gratification really quickly? Okay, then I was able to create users. Gratification. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, wow, immediately, just like in the commercial software, I was able to go uh, down this left side pane in the configurations, create a user, uh, I, and, and look at this, all this granular access control, I can control which module somebody can see, what they can't see, how much they can see within that module. Uh, this is impressive. This is what the commercial software offerings have, and this is right here being offered uh, um, as software as an application. Um, it creates, a, it has a nice built-in chart of accounts. Um, uh, I'm a lumper splitter guy. You know, you, the data modelers tend to be people about data. I mean, it's all about what things are we going to lump and which things are we going to split. And you have your people that are classically splitters. They want to split everything. You got your guys that want to lump everything. And I'm very bi. You know, sometimes I want to lump, sometimes I want to split. But whatever I want to do, by God, that's what I want to do. And uh, uh, the chart of accounts. This is, this is like the big dogs. This is like SAS. This is like SAP. This is like Oracle. This is the real deal here. Um, and I would also say the, the chart of accounts uh, that you get uh, with your software when you do it, the chart of accounts, uh, I'm trying to think of a good analogy in, in the software worlds that you're, you might be in. in. Um, Put some thought in your, soft, your chart of accounts. Don't just go with the default. Spend some time with your accountant. Spend a little time with a consultant. Time building your lumping and splitting scheme up front will save you. You have to live with this Dargon scheme for the rest of that accounting record for reasons that are uh, we won't get into tonight. So you want to you front load. It's like good software development front load investment in developing your buckets. Okay, uh, and then I usually like to show reports, uh, but for some reason I don't know how to get PDFs to happen in um, Libra Express yet, uh, but it does produce, this software also produces a good real balance sheet, okay? It produces real good reports. Overall, uh, because we're running out of time, I just want to tell you, we finally did it, folks, open source, has has a candidate out there that is as good as the commercial stuff. From what I can see in my cursory uh, two-week evaluation, and for me, having dipped into this, this framework for about once every two years for the past 10 years, I'm going, so it looks like it might be there. Now, how did this happen? What happened this summer that when I was tasked, uh, tagged to do this talk, I was going, well, crap, I can't talk about uh, open office because it still sucks. What happened this summer between the time I started this research? Is the guy who champions this is a guy named Fagan. And he's like a lot of um, visionaries in the software world. He's not all the time clued in on what makes good code, but he's, he has just ridden this horse and made pragmatic deals with the devil 
uh, to make the software happen. And it seems that this summer he got a $10 million bump. He got some investment. And I think that's what it took for him to take all this huge code base and all these modules and all this community and uh, cohere it together, uh, actually get servers up and get, uh, get it so it could be stood up write a bunch of great JavaScript. I mean, I'd say all that money was spent to write the JavaScript for the front end for this, for this particular instantiation of the software. And, uh, and that's why this has, has come in. But how, what does that mean? He has a business model that is not entirely consistent. This is open source software, but when we're looking at Udo, what he's doing is he's taking this framework that he's been building for the past 10 years and he's packaged it in something that he can sell. So it is, uh, if you want to use the software as a service version of OpenOffice, you're using Udo. This is what you can take if you're a real company, if you're a real dev shop, like uh, the dev shops that are popping up all over Durham, they hate everything else open source. They want to use QuickBooks and they want to use Zero. I think you can take this and champion this to the accountant and to the owners. Uh, and the fact that they're paying for it actually is going to make them feel less risk averse about it. But because some of us might quibble with a, a um, open source software that you have to pay for, uh, they make the point, they make pains of saying this is based on open ERP. I've been saying open office, open ERP. You can download the framework, you can see the code, it's all Python, Postgre, it's, it's open source. And you can have the stack like any open source software and you can do with it what you want in the open source traditional way. And um, it, so, so maybe three weeks ago, I didn't think I was going to have a good report for you. Uh, if I can actually write some checks from this software and uh, do a couple of other key tests that you can really only do. Um, I think we might have something that we can hold out uh, at, when we have Linux and open source dev shops. We can have accounting software that uh, matches the rest of our uh, ethos. I still think SQL Ledger is a very um, viable option if you're a Perl based company or you're a Perl based person. You don't want to use no daggum Python. You got some Perl there you can use. And Apache open for business if you're, you know, if you're a Java guy or a woman, uh, you got that. that. I think that's a, that's still a worthy stack that's worthy of energy. And I also think Triton is a very worthy stack. It's the one that I'm the most interested in. I, my little dream is that um, I can take Django and Triton, and because it's all based, uh, which is what Oracle does. I mean. Because the database engine underneath both of them is going to be Postgre, it means that that big customer database that I have uh, in my accounting software, I can make that, I can give permissions to the CRM stuff that I'm building in Django. And uh, I just feel like uh, rather than me trying, to me trying to participate in the uh, open ERP Udo world, which has now got a, a huge community, a huge, um, you know, social political ecology associated with it. I think there's a lot less politics in the Triton uh, stack right now. I think it's, if you're a very disciplined, uh, test-driven coder, this is the stack to get in that's new. So uh, uh, the runner-ups, that's, that's really the synopsis of the stories of the, of the story there. So wrap it up. Let's go to Bottom Wing and get a porter. The, uh, the one page summary that's supposed to be a bullet point per uh, slide. Most important point of all, bookkeepers of the homo habilis of computer science. <laughs> We're, we are, you know, 
We are the genetic root of death. So instead of hating us when we're down at the other end of the hallway, uh, love us. We, we are the cavemen of you. <laughs> Eric Leary has been following open source accounting for 10 years, and I didn't find what I was looking for. Maybe I did find it uh, thanks to being pressed uh, into this project this year. Evaluate according to your use case, personal, freelancer, small company, innovator. I understand who the stakeholders in the accounting process are, whether you're adapting accounting software for yourself or going to take the plunge into writing open source software. There are core requirements for all accounting software and then where the opportunity is, is finding a business model that's very poorly served in the commercial world or the uh, open source world. Hone in on that business model, write accounting software that helps that particular group of people do business. Uh, it seems to be worth about ten million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are five contenders out there right now, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, anybody who wants to argue with me, I'll let you win. If you think three others on the Wikipedia page are just as good. There are two ready to deploy without dev system and skills now. Those are the two that we really focused on tonight. Three ready to deploy if you do have dev and system men skills. Help build a community of documentation, which is all that is keeping some of these solutions from getting traction. So that's pretty much uh, my assessment of uh, accounting software in the open source world. Uh, and I carefully left no time for questions or dialogue. <laughs> but if you want to uh, wick some time in, I'll be glad to take questions or dialogue. In. Do yes. you see that, that Odoo is going to move to an open core type development system where they kind of hold back some features from the open source? Yes. I, uh, um, that was the smell that I was getting when I was reading why Triton wanted to fork uh, off. But I was, uh, I'm now not current on that. Um, I, uh, I was paying a lot more attention to that question about four years ago. And then I sort of just said, Eric, I, I got interested in other things. I got interested in Cherry Pie, thanks to you. And I just decided I didn't want to screw around with accounting software anymore. Now, uh, so that's a good question. And I'll try to have an answer for that. But I think, yeah, that is a core political rift in the fork. Yes, Brian. Um, so for someone who's just, who just wants to get like some accounting software set up for like finally family finances and whatnot, um, I mean it sounds like new cash is the like is the, the user the single user thing, but it also sounds like it's how much to get up and running. Would Odo be good for like final family finances or is it strictly uh, business? Uh, it's it really is for businesses. Uh, f uh, family finance uh, is yeah. I mean, I would do it uh, because, you know, I mean, I would do it uh, the same way I'd use a, you know, I'd use a server to play games, but uh, if I had it tri tricked out. But, but GNU Cache is not actually, it's, it's not that it, it's easy to bring up. I mean, uh, and it is, it's pretty solid. It doesn't really flake out or crash hardly at all. It's easy to bring up. It's just hard to, it's hard to figure out how to, do things. It's hard. It's hard to figure out how to write the first check. It's hard to figure out once you start using it and figure out how to use it. I would say in the open source world, <coughs> it is definitely it's definitely the thing. There is a C-based software called Grisby, uh, and if all you want is a check write, if you just want something to keep track of your your bank statement and reconcile your bank statement, Grisby is great. But that is the extent of what it'll do. It doesn't even give you it doesn't even give you reports that show you how you. Spend you know, you don't have, you can't categorize things to see how you spent your money at the end of the year. All it is is a, it's a checkbook. But it's a darn solid checkbook. I mean, it, it's actually some of the most bulletproof software of everything I've downloaded. It just doesn't have very much functionality. Uh, I would, I would say, get the chocolate or the liquor, and uh, and I think a new cash will reward you. But it'll also be, I. It, you know, it's still going to be quirky. There'll be times, you know, you'll think you've got that software down cold. The next summer, you'll have been using it for six months, and it, you know, it, it still has the ability to throw you a curveball. You know, but I'd say it's good to go for for family stuff. Um, yes, sir. Does Odoo allow you to import a new cache file? 
No, I do not believe that it, well, let me take that back. Um, GNU Cash uh, exports CSVs. So, and I'm gonna bet that there, somebody has written a module to uh, import CSVs into Odoo. The other thing that's interesting about uh, Odoo right now, you know, I said uh, importing OFX is an essential requirement, but it's not baked into the core thing. And the module that looks like it's designed to import OFX files, uh, I didn't have a chance to ring it out. I don't know, the, the problem with this uh, community, uh, this modular approach, it's like any modular approach in the open source world, you've got varying qualities of implementation. I'm not really sure how good that is. But I would, I would say CSV is pretty universal, and I'm betting there is absolutely a way to import a CSV into uh, uh, OpenERP. Uh, that's the most obvious module to implement, and GNU Cache definitely exports uh, CSV. You probably will have to do some data munging to make the CSV. You, you probably have to do have a couple of false starts uh, and have to munge your tables a little bit to make it work. But I haven't done it, so I, I don't know that I, that's a qualified answer. Yes. Any other questions? Ready. Special feature built in for keeping track of like the Bitcoin stuff. Uh, I I actually <laughs> think I think there actually is, and I think somebody has already started writing modules for that. That's that's in the uh, Odoo stuff. Uh, uh, but let's get together and we'll we'll bring up my my instance of it, and we'll go to the modules page and see if somebody has done that. Thank you.